All right, well, and hello, folks. <laughs> you can see Mike tonight. How about that? Yeah. Instead of the back of his head all the time. Yeah. <laughs> A little less glare. <laughs> Doppler Tom's in the chat room. And Richard will probably be later, hopefully. We'll see. You never know that guy. He's got a lot going on. Baseball playoffs have started, and the road teams have won the first three games. Yep, yep. All right. If the Tigers ain't in it, I'm not real interested in baseball now. Yeah. I just lost all interest. I'm more interested in uh, Michigan. Yeah. The Lions, terrible, that was, terrible. That was such a ridiculous yeah. bad call out. It, it was. I mean, it was plain sight, but it cost them the probably cost them the game. We should have should have been ahead anyway. Shouldn't have got down that close. True. Red Wings start tomorrow night. Yeah, there you maybe, go. Maybe there you go. That might be a team that we can get That'd be excited a little, about. Right, right, right. Okay, here we go. Stand by. Videos rolling. Chat rooms up, and here we go. Recorded live. Hi, this is Lisa Hicks Clayton, Dearborn Heights City Councilwoman, and you're listening to GC Community Chat. And now, here's your host, Carrie Parton. Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of GC Community Chat. I'm your host, Carrie, and joining me tonight is Wayne County Commissioner Richard LeBlanc, Dr. Tom Iwinski, and Mike Jones. The show is dedicated to the residents and businesses of Garden City, as well as the surrounding communities. Remember, we're working hard to promote our community and yours. Well, hello, Garden City and the surrounding communities. Westland, Dearborn Heights, Inkster, what, Livonia. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry, I apologize. Redford, yes, you name it. We got to cover all. Canton, of and the United Kingdom. We even get the United Kingdom in here once in a while. So, thanks for tuning in tonight. You're listening to GC Community Chat, uh, episode 264 for October 8th, wow. 2015. Yeah, they're piling up them shows, aren't they? Mm -hmm. This is Garden City's only live podcast where we shall uh, share news you can use and promote our community and yours. I'm your host, Kerry. And joining me tonight will be our favorite weather guy, Doppler Tom Iwinski. Tom, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Awesome, awesome. Can't complain. Enjoying the weather. <laughs> yeah, enjoying it big time. Former Garden City Councilman and longtime resident, Mr. Mike Jones, is in the house. How you doing, Mike? Doing great, Gary. Yeah, the weather's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Mike, uh, uh, Tom's come through, that's for sure. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a nice day for... The uh, chili cook-off, and yep, yep. for me being in Ann Arbor for the Michigan football game Saturday afternoon. Yeah, lots of sunshine and a little cool, but that's okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll be all right. Uh, hopefully a little later in the show, Richard said he's going to be joining us, and uh, hopefully he'll have some county news and some updates for us. So, Tom and Mike, uh, how's the week gone so far for you? Good? Been busy, Tom? I can go first. Oh. <laughs> no, my my week's been been relatively uneventful. Just a little of this, little of that. Keep busy. Dri driving a fish dialer ride to a doctor's appointment and Kiwanis. Yeah, and Kiwanis. And all kinds of stuff. How about you, Tom? Uh, school is keeping me very, very busy this week and next week is going to be very busy with three exams I have. Oh wow! So it's be very, very busy. How many classes you taking this year? Um, I have four classes. Wow. Yeah. And are you working, too, on top of that? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You can't deal with the weather. So you got a full schedule, too. Yeah, it's pretty much a full oh, load if you got four classes. Yeah, that is. It's a full load. All right. Well, tonight we are going to uh, basically recap uh, last week's show, I think, and uh, if we have any other topics, Mike, you got a newspaper over there. I know we'll probably talk about a few things, but... Um, we'll bring you up to date on uh, what's going on in the community. Uh, we got a lot of events, a big one coming up this weekend we're going to talk about. 
Also, Richard uh, has advised us of a major road that will be uh, done next spring, and we'll uh, have that for you shortly. Wow. If you haven't heard it, you're going to hear it first here. Uh, Tom will uh, be here with the uh, great weather forecast for the weekend, we hope. Jory and Holly once again have their gardening tips, and tonight they're going to talk about frost protection. Hopefully we're not going to get no frost for a little bit, but you never know. And then, as always, Mike's going to be here with some community announcements for us, so why not sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us for the next 60 minutes or so. Uh, okay, first up tonight is our favorite weatherman, uh, Doppler Tom. We're going to get to him right away, and then... Um, We'll get to uh, Joy and Holly, so let's get Tom in here. Okay, let's do a check on weather with Doppler Tom. Let's see what he has in store for the rest of this week and the weekend coming up. Tom, take it away. Man, oh man, this weather's really been nice. Yeah, it's we need a bottle. Been nice, but <laughs> the clouds have started to move in as we got through the afternoon. It's easy now. It wasn't nice in the morning, but as this front moves closer and closer, those clouds increased. And as we get into the overnight hours, we are going to see a little bit of rain. Mm-hmm. Nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy that we can't handle. But sure, we definitely could use a little bit of rain. We haven't really seen yeah, it's any dry out there. significant rain. Yeah, in some time. So we're going to see a little bit of rain overnight. Probably not anything to worry about with any flooding or anything, but some good downfalls are definitely likely, and those temperatures will be on the mild side with all those clouds and the rain keeping those uh, temperatures a little bit up in the upper 50s, so uh, overall a mild night. And as we get into tomorrow, that front will move through during the early morning hours, so the morning will be cloudy, but as we get later throughout the day, going to start clearing out and the sun will make an appearance as we get late in the day and those temperatures will be much cooler than they have been the last few days we've been above average the last few days in the low 70s and um we're now going to be in the low 60s which is a little bit below average behind this front and that's going to continue as we get into the weekend as well this weekend like i said last week and you and i never lie to you carrie right (laughs) (laughs) that's right this weekend (laughs) <laughs> it does look very nice, especially Saturday and Sunday, for that right. chilly cook-off. So, awesome. Um, if you have any outdoor plans, definitely, if you don't have them, definitely make them, because this is a very busy uh, weekend for Garden City. So definitely the weekend to be out and about, and it's going to be a very good weekend. The only problem, awesome. actually, Saturday morning is a little bit of fog, but that will quickly dissipate as we get um, throughout the morning hours. And those temperatures for Saturday will be in the low 60s again, so... Overall, I think that's pretty good weather for chili. You don't want it too warm and chill and mm-hmm. eating that chili as well. So yeah, overall, perfect. I think it's a great temperature, not too cold and not too warm. Yeah. It's a good weather and for we good weather for football Sunday, too. <laughs> the temperatures will increase a little bit more into the lower seventies, so we will be above average Sunday. So that's another great day out there. And as we get into next week, Monday on Columbus Day. We will probably see an overall a cloudy day as this next system begins to move in. And those temperatures will be mild again on Monday uh, in the low 70s, which is above average. And as we get late in the day, we will see a little bit of rain move through during the evening hours. And then overnight, it will start to dissipate as that front moves through. And as we get into Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll, there will be a more substantial cool down if you're really ready for the fall temperatures out there, uh, low to mid-60s uh, throughout all of next week, excluding Monday, ahead of that front. So if you're ready for this, uh, fall weather is slowly coming, but um, it's definitely been mild out there. And believe it or not, Carrie, all this mild weather across the Great Lakes is really hindering the uh, fall foliage, believe it or not. Yeah. I looked at some of the um, averages and some of the current observations from this year and last year at the same time. Last year, we were much more... Um, if you will, light it up with the trees than mm-hmm. we are this year. There's a few trees that are definitely lit it up, but it's definitely a slow progress because of these mild temperatures. And they, the, what fall foliage definitely likes is cool days and crisp nights for those, um, for uh, all that um, element and mm-hmm. photosynthesis and all that to really take over. And right. Over. So that is going to happen as we get into next week, but it's a slow process. But the good news is I don't see any Ross, so that's some great news. 40 for uh, the overnight lows as we get into next week. Um, but if we expand outward and talk about the other weather, last week I talked about a very frightening forecast, if you remember that, and yeah. it definitely came true, which is something I didn't want to come true, which was a very significant historic rainfall and flooding event across the Carolinas. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I know um, Randy Walker was heading toward that area, yeah. and he was at the Clemson game, and that right, that the, that whole game was just so much rain. And I can't uh, believe he's sad in that. The <laughs> most significant rain wasn't by him; it was actually around game? Columbia and Charleston. But nevertheless, he got a lot of rain out there. Out. And unfortunately, there was so much rain over a 36 to 48 hour period that there was. Um, a lot of flooding out there, and unfortunately, there was the death toll yeah. is now approaching 20 people wow. throughout the Carolinas that have Terrible. perished. And what really irks me is the fact that the death toll continues to rise days after the flood, yeah. because these people ignore the barricades yep. on the road and go right into it and get into Stupid. their own trouble. I just, I just don't understand what kind of an idiot can do that. I know. Um, I, I guess the Driving society to a isn't patient anymore. Anybody. I don't really know what else mm-hmm. there is to say. I just, I don't understand what, what mindset you're in that you would just go past the Yeah, what's so important, you know? I mean, to, it's just, it's stupid. It just makes no it, sense. Exactly. I just don't get it. And unfortunately, there's so much rain that fell. Oh, they got over, uh, two feet of rain. And that's just wow. unfathomable. You oh remember last year, in August, when we had that significant rain yep, yep. and all that flood in Detroit, that was only four inches. Oh my so gosh! You, can, you can't you can't even fathom how much that rain would have no, here. That's but um, I, that's very very unlikely. I don't think that would ever ever happen. But yeah, just to put that into perspective, yeah, that is a lot of rain. Sure. And no. the, now the problem now is that at the rain has stopped, but there's dam breaches continuing to be compromised all yeah. across the. Carolinas because the rain, the water just has nowhere to go, Carrie. I mean, once the rain stops, you think the floods are over. That yeah. rain is just not, the water is not going to go anywhere. It's still there. It has to flow through the rivers. Mm-hmm. So places that aren't seeing floods are going to see floods. And it's just a long mess and it's going to be months and possibly even years before they get back to normal out there, which is just a, which is just another thing that's just heartbreaking out there. And the other side of the story is Hurricane Joaquin. Mm-hmm. Last uh, week on the show, I talked about the fact that it wasn't going to hit the United States, which was great news. I saw some indications about that late last week. Mm-hmm. But there was still another tragedy out there, which I just cannot fathom again. <laughs> I know, this, the ship. This cruise ship goes <laughs> right into the path of a hurricane, <laughs> and now they're all dead. I yeah. just, it just really irks me. Yeah. They, the forecast All when the they warnings. left Jacksonville, Florida, was for that hurricane to intensify into a hurricane. It wasn't a hurricane at the time they left, but the, the forecast right was for that it. hurricane to be in the Bahamas. And yet they still went. I just, I just don't get it. I don't either. No. It just really irks me, and the weather community is really irked by it too. I, it's just something that really gets me going, Terry. You know how I am with yep. weather and safety. It's yep. just something that I always like to uh, talk about. Yeah. But it's something that. Another thing that was really bothering me this week, so the weather community has not been doing, hasn't been a good week for us because of all these fatalities out there. Hmm. I just I just don't get when people will learn. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. I, mean, I guess you'll learn the hard way. Um, but that was the other big story out there is that cruise ship got caught in that Hurricane Joaquin, which is was a very powerful hurricane that sat over the Bahamas, mm-hmm. and now it's out to sea and. Now it's affecting the northern Atlantic, so it's now becoming a historic storm, and it's now dissipating out there. And the last story I have is El Nino. Hopefully, this El Nino will, you know, will bring some rain to the west coast because they're not really seeing any. There was an interesting uh, stat that just came out: California needs ten feet of rain oh. to uh, ratify that whole drought. Oh my gosh! That dr- the the big historic rain event that was two feet. That's not even going to do like three-fourths of it Jeez. so just to put that in this crazy perspective out there and it's just they're gonna have a long time out there but hopefully as we get into the winter months the pattern will completely change and then we'll finally get some rain because the new outlook came out and they're still continuing to say that this is going to be a very strong el nino and mm-hmm. for us that is a very mild winter so hopefully this Cross winter will fingers. definitely give us a reprieve in the last few winters <laughs> and i'm still thinking that it will so that's some good Great. And the um, wrap it up. Those are the biggest weather stories out there. Um, death and destruction, and people just need to learn to, oh, to, just to respect the weather. I just don't keep. I just don't think people respect the weather anymore, and it yeah. can definitely cost you your life. So if you want to keep <laughs> tuned to this, all the local weather information, just go to my website, DopplerTimeWeather.com.
Yeah, it just it makes no sense to me either. They just uh, totally disregard all the warnings. It's yeah. it's incredible. You're, dri you're driving home, and this is your usual route, and you can't see the the street because it's flooded. Right. And so rather than back up and go some try something else, you decide, well, I'll just drive through. Plow it. through it. God, yeah. You, <laughs> and it, it it doesn't take much water for. For the car to be lifted, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's it's exactly. Just... It only takes a foot of water, believe yeah. it or not. Like Tom said, sometimes you you drive into it, yeah, and you don't know whether it's six inches or or six feet of water on the yeah. road. Yeah, you know, you were talking about the uh, the foliage uh, uh, being kind of slow down here, but we're going up to Sault Ste. Marie. We're leaving Sunday oh, after okay. the chili cook-off for that uh, Agogwin terrain or whatever up there in the. Mm -hmm. Sault Ste. Marie on the uh, Ontario I'm sure side. Sure, they got good color on them. I would there. imagine. Definitely, yeah, it's much brighter up there. Yeah, I would say more color. Yeah. Okay. And then one other thing, I know it's still uh, a couple weeks out, but the 29th we're having the trunk or treat. It's going to be a huge event, and we're hoping for some good weather for that, at least dry, so for the kids. So if you can keep us uh, tuned to that. I'll when keep you know. my red phone handy, and hopefully we can get that dry. Uh, dry little wizard over here and <laughs> yeah yeah hey. keep your crystal ball handy what you, there what are you talking yeah, about yeah. the show at that night i think um i don't know um we can either do it wednesday or we can cancel thursday whatever we want whatever the, we want to do you the boss <laughs> are you available wednesday My, tom i'm available pretty much every day okay all right, well, we could probably do a we show want, Wednesday then. We don't want to take him away from an exam or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 we don't want to do that. But. The exams are on Thursday, so oh, after, okay. uh, Thursday during the day. So, mm -hmm. I mean, no, okay. during the night, I'm just, all right. I'm cool. just, I'm just relaxing. All and right, well. I, I can break for some time. All right, I will let you know for sure uh, if we're going to do the right. show the 28th then. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, now we got the fantastic weather forecast. Uh, let's get Joy and Holly in here for some gardening tips. Uh, and they're going to be talking about protecting your plants from frost. Eventually we will get the frost, but we don't need it right now. So here's Joy and Holly. Great art. This is Gardening in Two Minutes. As fall approaches, that means the chance of frost is much higher. So what do you do when you have plants that are outdoors that you want to protect for at least a few more growing days before the frost kills them? What you want to do, the biggest thing is if your plants are in the ground, you want to water them, make sure they're hydrated properly. A hydrated plant is less likely or have a lower chance of being frost damaged or killed than a non-hydrated plant because the plant is as healthy as it possibly can be. You also want to think about if you have containers, you can simply just pull them in a shed or a garage, put them in the, your back hallway. Even if you have to put them in your car, you can get them away from the frost. And it also depends on the type of plant. Tomatoes can tolerate some levels of a frost without being covered compared to a watermelon or cantaloupe or pumpkin that can't handle any frost whatsoever. You can also cover these plants with a bed sheet but remove them at daybreak. You can also cover them with uh, plastic, clear plastic, but any place where the foliage contacts the plastic, that foliage will die because of the contact with the environment. So these are just some of the ways that you can potentially prolong the life of your plants in your garden, even though we know at some point that uh, they're going to die because of the cold weather. If you are an early riser and you can't cover your plants, you can spray the frost up your plants right away in the morning to help prolong their life. This may not save all of them, but it will greatly enhance the chances of survival rate. For more information on protecting your plants from frost, our weekly video productions, as well as our free downloadable digital quarterly magazines, you can find all that information at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. For the health conscious organic gardener worldwide. For Gardening in Two Minutes, I'm Joy Baird. I'm Holly Baird. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. 
Okay, I want to get to our big announcement here. Um, I don't know if you've heard it yet, but uh, I wish Richard was here and he could announce it, but he had texted me uh, the other day, and I think that this is one of the roads that I complained about more than, than Merriman Road before Cherry it was Hill. done, and we are getting Cherry Hill done what from stretch? Merriman to Wayne, wow. the whole stretch. So that is going to be fantastic. That would be a great, uh, yeah, a great after, project. From Wayne to Newburgh, it's okay. Yeah, not bad from Wayne to Newburgh. But, yeah, from Merriman to uh, Wayne, terrible. And, actually, Merriman to Inkster is bad, but I guess yeah. that might be slated for later. But, yeah, so that's great news. Uh, Richard was uh, pushing hard for that and uh, got it through for us. I also want to mention there's going to be a ceremony uh, that's going to be held on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. at Roma Hall uh, in the parking lot there, 32550 Cherry Hill, uh, Roma Hall. So uh, it's open to the public. Uh, residents can come and show up, and uh, we hope that uh, our city officials will come and represent Garden City strong. Let's not make this a entirely Westland event. So hopefully uh, Garden City will uh, show up at that event. But, yeah, that's good news. Uh, it's not the roads bill, but, hey, we'll take it, huh, Mike? Is, yeah, is Terry Hill um, a state road or a county road? Uh, I think it's county. I believe it is county. Merriman's a state road, I believe. Yeah, I believe it's county. Yeah. Uh, if Richard shows up, we can ask him that. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure. But, yeah, good news. Cherry Hill will be done next spring, so look forward to that. All right. Uh be the only road that gets done. Yeah. <laughs> the pace that the legislature moves. Yeah. That would that'd be a pretty pretty good-sized project there, though, for mm -hmm. a while anyway. So, But, hey, we'll take it for sure. All right. So would you like to be a part of the conversation here tonight? You can. All you have to do is um, give us a call at uh, 1-724-444-7444, and you're going to be asked to enter a call caller ID, and that number is 82757, followed by the pound sign. Or you can join us in our chat room by going to TalkShoe.com and search for show ID 82757. That takes you right to our main show page where you'll click on the large Join In button. And a window's going to open up. You can sign in as a guest or you can, you know, make your own account if you want. It doesn't cost you anything. And that's all there is to it. Once you're in the chat room, you can type your questions and comments at the bottom of the page. And you'll find our phone number and show ID there as well. You can also text your questions to us at 734-788-9319. And if you can't join us live here tonight, we have that covered too. All you have, uh, all of our shows are recorded, so you can catch us later on our YouTube channel, I mean on our Facebook channel at facebook.com slash gcchat, where we'll be posting the audio from tonight's show uh, sometime after we sign off tonight, about 30 minutes or so. So look forward to that. Uh, or once again, you can uh, go to our main show page, TalkShoe.com, show ID 82757, and you'll find all 264 shows over there. We're also in iTunes. Just search for GC Community Chat. And if that wasn't enough, Mike. Sir. We are also doing a live, unedited video of tonight's show, so you can put a face with the voice. Hang loose. And that will be available sometime tomorrow on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash community chat show. We have a lot of shows over there for you, so check them out. And while you're there, uh, why don't you uh, subscribe? That way uh, you'll be notified when we post future shows. I just want to mention that if you'd like to be a guest on the show here tonight or any night, we still have plenty of dates available. Maybe you own a business or belong to an organization and you'd like to share your information with us and the surrounding communities, then just send us an email at gccommunitychat at gmail.com, and we will shoot you some available dates, and that's all there is to it. So contact us today. Uh, please mark your calendar, speaking of guests, uh, for October 22nd, when we're going to welcome Dearborn Heights uh, Councilwoman Lisa Hicks-Clayton uh, back to the show. She's been on the show several times. She will also be bringing um, Kiwanis District Chairman uh, Larry Memer, and I hope or Memer, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, they are trying to open up a Kiwanis uh, branch in Westland in uh, Belleville, so they want to come and talk about that. Mike, yes, yeah, you know a little bit about that, I think. Yeah, it's it'd be good. Uh, 
as you, you and I know, Kiwanis does a lot of great things in the community, especially yeah. in regards to kids. And they keep it in the community, which yeah. is nice, yeah. in your own community. And Westland and used to have a chapter, but uh, it went by the wayside, and they're trying to get one started again. It's a pretty pretty good-sized community. It would be a shame yeah. for them not to even be represented by one of the major service organizations. Right. Yeah. So... So we wish them luck, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit on the 22nd. Should be interesting. Uh, okay, let's, um, you know, I want to mention uh, it's October and that time of year again, and uh, the Straight Farmhouse Museum uh, has their Skeletons on Review is back. And if you haven't seen that yet, it's pretty cool how they have it all laid out with the skeletons over there. Uh, this is a kid-friendly uh, event. Um, and the skeletons will be on display starting now through the 31st of this year um, uh, at the Straight Farmhouse. And then also back by popular qu- request is evenings with the skeletons uh, at the farmhouse, and uh, they will be open on select evenings in October for families in addition to regular museum hours, and those dates are October 21st, 23rd, and 27th, from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Now, there's no charge for this event. Uh, come enjoy an evening with your family. If you'd like to make a donation, uh, they will gladly take it, but uh, you don't have to pay for this event. It's pretty cool. Have, have you seen that? I have not seen the skeleton thing. Yeah, they have Kiwanis a lot just, of... Yeah, Kiwanis just had their uh, yeah, annual in induction of officer ceremony over at the Straight Farmhouse, and that went off well. It's, it's a good location for... For meetings and yep. wedding receptions and things like that, it's, yep. Yep. it's kind of perfect. For yeah, them. if you'd like to buy a brick over there, they uh, yeah, there's the uh, Kiwanis uh, Garden City Memorial Walkway. You can go over there and check that out yep. to honor uh, past members, and it's really really nice how they have it laid out over there. Yes, it is. So uh, check it out. You can take free tours of the uh, museum um, on Wednesdays and Saturdays, I believe. I'm sure our buddy Mike Lawrence would be glad. To Mike schedule. Lawrence loves to do it. Yeah, he just don't like going to Ralph's room. He won't go into Ralph's room. Ralph <laughs> is is the resident guest uh, ghost over there. So, if you believe in ghosts, talk to Mike. <laughs> He'll tell you all about it. Believe me. All right. Also, uh, going on, uh, we got a big event, Mike, this weekend, tomorrow or Saturday. Sure chili do. cookoff. Yeah, uh, that's bigger happening. than ever. Yeah, that's happening from uh, 12 to 5. And, yeah, they are expecting it to be bigger than ever because Plymouth canceled their chili cook-off. So we think we're going to get some people that usually go to chili cook-off there. We're going to have and a, and a lot of motorcycles, a lot of motorcycles. Uh, they're going to have, what else, hot rods. Uh, they're going to have um, uh, wagon rides uh, from the uh, fire department. They're having their open house from 11 to 3. We're also going to have shuttle buses from the high school parking lot. That's a new thing this year. That's going to be great. Yeah, because always before we just jammed that yeah. that parking with all the plastic cars. We couldn't get in and there. so forth, and it, it had to hurt the businesses. Yeah. So anybody that's listening to this, uh, if you're going to the chili cook-off, be sure to park in the high school parking lot. They're going to be running shuttles. Uh, I think it's M dot or something running them back and forth, and that will run until five thirty. Uh, the chili cook costs from 12 to 5, the open house from 11 to 3. Hey, that fire, uh, fire department open house is a fun, fun event. We're not doing our show there this year. We've, uh, we canceled doing that, uh, after doing it three years in a row, but we're so involved with the GCBA and everything that's going on. Uh, we just wouldn't have the time, so, and I'm going to be a judge, so. Well, there's a lot of stuff that takes place at that fire department open house, too. They have, Jaws of Life demonstration. Uh, the kids can get in the fire trucks and do the sirens and flashers. And yeah. the Garden City Garden Club has a tremendous bake sale over there. Right. They got some really good baked goods, so you're going to want to check that out. Um, it's, it's too bad you don't have anything you can do after the chili cook off, or do you? Yes. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. <laughs> First, new this year, right after the chili cook off. Uh, don't go home because uh, the weather is going to be great, and we're going to have it's called the Chili Cook-Off Afterburn, and that's going to be from 5 to 9 p.m. We're going to have entertainment uh, by Bonnie and the Working Girls. You may remember them from the uh, Autos for Autism 
show over there at the high school this uh, this summer. They did a great job, really good all girl band. You're going to like them. We're going to have um, food that's available for purchase: pulled pork, ribs, chicken, hot dogs. We're also going to have another lady over there uh, serving fresh homemade pizzas, right to order. Wow personal pizzas, and she calls them dog ears. They're similar to elephant ears, but uh, they're smaller, smaller, so she calls them dog ears. So that's kind of cute. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to sampling all this stuff, and uh, it's going to really, really be a fun night. So no need in uh, going home. Just spend the evening with us uh, after the afterburn, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And the chili is going to be flowing. Yeah, the competition has been broken down into... Restaurant. Sort of amateurs division and a restaurant division. Yeah, I think so they have. Qantas has got a, got an entry, and and you don't have to compete against Tonys and all these restaurants that do it professionally. Right. I think they have what a six or seven restaurants. I think that are going to be competing. That's what I heard. And uh, they have to make fifteen gallons each, and then I think the amateurs they got they're up to like twenty or twenty one amateurs, and I'm going to be a, a judge on the amateurs. I'm really looking forward to that. We're buying like eight. Pounds of hamburger or something like that for ours. <laughs> yeah, it's costly, but uh, you know, yeah, but people people eat it, man. It's it's a it's good community relations to, to get out there with your your fellow yep. members of the community and share and have a good time. It's yep. one of the few things that we do citywide that can really attract a a wide range of people. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a good time, and uh, it's going to be good uh, chilly weather too. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we, okay, we covered the categories. There's going to be restaurant and, uh, amateur. Um, let's see. Other events. The afterburn, I said, from, uh, 5 to 9 p.m. Also, after the afterburn, if you want to go over to Albert's on the Alley, he's going to be having a little get together over there, too. But be sure to come to the afterburn first, because that's where it's happening, right after the chili cook-off. Do we have any update on Albert's on the Alley? Uh, in terms of ownership and well, he's season. still there. Yeah, um, he's still looking for an investor. To yeah, I think so. To, I think he's yeah. either looking for an investor or it's still up for sale. I believe, um, mm-hmm. but nothing, nothing concrete yet. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, when we hear something, we'll let people know. Yeah. Um, okay, and then as I mentioned um, earlier to Tom, um, October twenty ninth. We are going to have a trunk or treat that we're doing in the farmer's uh, market parking lot. And we are up to over 956 families Wow! that are attending. So you that's figure a, if they have one kid each, that's going to be a lot of people. That's a, yeah, that's a thousand <laughs> kids right there. Um, and what it is, if you don't know what a trunk or treat is, you have uh, cars and they open their trunks, they decorate their cars for Halloween, and they pass out candy right from the trunks. And we have a lot of businesses that are involved. We're looking for a lot more. Uh, I think we're over 40 trunks now, right now as we stand. We're going to have um, uh, Mike Leica is going to be there with the stormtroopers. He's going to have R2-D2 there. Uh, the fire department's going to have a uh, truck in there, and Sparky's going to be there, Sparky the fire dog for the kids. Um, certified Home Improvements doing two uh, trucks. They're bringing two in. Uh, boy, we just got a, a lot, a lot of people that are stepping up, and uh, it's just a great thing for the community. Yeah. And it's a it's, safe environment. That's what I was going to just say. Very it's, safe. It's a, it's a nice, safe trick-or-treat atmosphere. You don't have to have right. the kids wandering up and down neighborhood streets, yep. and you don't, don't even know whose door you're knocking on. Exactly. This, yeah. this way it's all controlled and policed. And it's going to be pretty much corralled. Uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, you know, have it blocked off, you know, for traffic and that. The way we're going to have the uh, cars, the trunks there, going to be kind of like a horseshoe or half half circle, and we'll start them in like four different uh, positions so everybody gets some candy. So, uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to that. Um, now, if you want to uh, uh, decorate a car and participate, handing out candy, if you are a business or an organization, and I stress that the Kiwanis, the Rotary should uh, have a trunk or uh, trunk in there. It's great community uh, relations. Um, it doesn't cost you anything except the price of the candy or whatever you're going to pass out. If you own a business, if you have coupons, put that in the bag too with them. It's a great way to tap into some of that uh, potential customers there, bring them back. We have people coming from Canton, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Livonia, Redford, all over. 
So uh, we want to bring them in and, and uh, do a good show and show our city proud. Uh, so anyway, if you want to decorate a car or a truck, and setup will be at 4.30, and the trunk or treat will start at 5.30. So that gives you an hour to set up. You can contact uh, Debbie at You Are My Art. Uh, that's all one word, You Are My Art at att.net, or you can give me a call at 734-788-9319, and we will get you on the list and uh, get you going. So hopefully if you're a business or organization, we're looking forward to having you. And it will uh, it will go as long as the candy lasts, and it's also weather permitting, so we're really hoping Tom comes through with some some yeah. good weather that night. At least dry. We can we can put up with a little cool, but yeah. uh, I think we're going to have um, we're also going to have a woman who's going to be doing donuts and uh, hot cider there too, if I'm wow. not mistaken. So it's going to be could be a lot of fun. I love donuts and hot cider. Oh, I do too. Oh, I do too. Hot cider donuts. <laughs> and the greasier the better. <laughs> mm. yeah, apple spice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And then uh, we're going to have the 55th Santa Land Parade. I guess it's the 55th. November 28th at 10 a.m. That starts. The theme this year is Christmas in the Mitten. Uh, I guess Qantas is going to have a, yeah, we, a float. You're, we you're have, talking about it today? Yeah, we have a float every year, and uh, there was a lot of talk at the meeting today about the design and some suggestions and so forth. Sounds like it's going to be quite terrific. Uh, yeah, you don't want to give too much away, but... yeah. Our, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Our, our chairperson for that is Joe Barson of Barson's Greenhouse. Yeah, we'll give Joe a shout out. Joe, yeah. uh, Joe does a lot for the community, and uh, we appreciate all he does. And uh, he's got a great nursery over there too. So yeah, that's going to be. Uh, I wonder if they're going to have that drone this year, uh, flying around and taking pictures. That was pretty know. cool. Last year they had that really cool. Um, yeah, and I believe uh, the softball player is going to be the uh, grand marshal uh, oh the girl name? the girl from u, u of m in yeah. garden city yeah yeah i can't yeah, remember her name yeah, her, now it slips be, my name now i think she's a senior at, at u of m this year yep yep yeah they, so, had a, they had a great season she was one of their team leaders yep exactly and then directly uh after the uh santa land parade we are the gcba is uh also doing a uh, holiday craft and business expo so if you are interested in that, if you're a crafter or uh, you own a business and you want to sell some stuff there, that's going to be on um, 1128 uh, from 12 to 4. It's going to be held at the Garden City Moose Hall at 29137 Ford Road. And it's only 10 bucks for a table for your spot. You can't beat that. Uh, there's going to be food available there, I believe. And for more information, you are going to call Kelly. Oh, and I didn't put that phone number on here. I can't believe it. I will put that at the end of the show. I will let you know. Or if you want, just uh, get a hold of me, and uh, I can uh, forward it to Kelly. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. I think we already have one guy does stained glass, and he'll be there selling uh, his stuff. And so, yeah, get your tables reserved early because this is going to start, uh, they're going to start going quick. We're only, we can only get so many in there. So we hope to hear from you. And I will, yeah, once again. Oh, you just, want the phone number? Yeah, you have Kelly's phone number. It's on yeah, 734-266-0565. Okay, 734. Lunch will be available. 266-0565. Uh -huh. Okay. They do say that lunch will be available, and it's that's also Small Business Saturday. So yeah, which is a day when you try to promote people and encourage them to to shop locally and support your local businesses. And when we have that many people in town for the parade, and you know we usually have a good good crowd. Yeah, we're going to want to tap into some of that. So you definitely want to get uh, get your table reserved and get that uh, get in that expo. Uh, let's see. Plans for next year. Um, I know that we're thinking of doing some music under the stars, maybe in the city park this year. Oh, neat. Uh, we do have a meeting tomorrow night, so we will be going over some of that. And we'll see how this goes with the afterburn. And if it's a big success, we will probably do, uh, more music under the stars. We want to try and utilize the, uh, 
Oh, and good news. Uh, the Garden City Business Alliance got their EIN number, so we now have our own check-in account. Fantastic. So we'll be able to uh, utilize that a little better. makes it a little easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, DDA did a great job. They were holding our money for us, and we really appreciate everything they've done for us, uh, working with us in partnership with us, too. We really appreciate it. Kim and Teresa have done a lot over there. They've really done a good job. Can't say enough. Well, they're good people. Yep, very good. Um, let's see. Um, I think that's all I got right now on on events. I know next year they're naturally going to do the uh, the flea circus and the lucky squirrel, I believe, and taste fest. Taste fest in mm. May. I forgot. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, I've had a couple people call me already and say, when's the next Taste Fest? And I said, May. And they oh, we got to wait that long? Yeah. <laughs> well, that it's a, is it's a kind of event that people say, yeah. gee, I wish you'd do it twice a year. But it's, it, it's, that better, would be, yeah. it's better for these kind of things. It's You're a, right. Once a year, people can get longer to look forward to them and plan them. I agree. I agree. And it really builds up the enthusiasm. Yeah, when yeah. So yeah, the, yeah, the Taste Fest, uh, that last year, if you didn't go to the Taste Fest last year, we had, uh, about 189 people, three school buses, yeah. eight, I think eight restaurants. Um, you really missed something, let me tell you. We, uh, you, you, we put the feed bag on that night, didn't we? Yeah, you, you gotta be very disciplined in terms <laughs> of taking small servings of yeah, things. You do. If you're gonna get a chance to sample everything from, yeah. from all eight restaurants. <laughs> it was, our, our eighth restaurants was, Eighth restaurant was City Cafe. And fortunately, <laughs> Tony prepared like little doggy bags that you could take with you because everybody got there and they were stuffed. Yeah, yeah. I think he even gave the bus driver a doggy bag yeah. to take with her. So uh, yeah, it was it was a fun time. Uh, it's twenty bucks. Uh, you get your T-shirt uh, as a as a uh, as a ticket, and you get on the buses and you just go to these restaurants and you eat to your heart's content yeah. and. Uh, like I said, those tickets are going fast. They go real fast. So when you know that they're on sale, you're going to want to get them right away. So yeah. uh, it's it's a big deal. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we brought that back. Yeah, the in the whole bus ride from restaurant to restaurant. Oh, that's a blast. If you if you got some gr- great people on your bus, that, <laughs> that's a that's a rolling party. It is. It is. It really is. Yeah, we had a had a. I'm telling you, it was just a great great time. It went off without a hitch too. So all right, I think we're going to get. Mike in here and let him do a couple of uh, announcements I know he's got over there so uh, let's get listen to Mike's uh, intro I've got an intro wow <laughs> hey it's time to get Mike in here for some community announcements so oh, Mike uh, take it away my own intro <laughs> <sighs> ah, ah, ah. there you go Mike what do you got for us buddy <laughs> My beating heart. I want you know. I worked on that hard today. <laughs> yeah, I, I could, I could see the touch of, of all the hard work that went into that. <laughs> all right, uh, coming up on October twenty third, there's a Halloween party primarily for seniors, but I, I don't think we're going to check your uh, birth certificate. Uh, it's, it's ten dollars. It's at Maplewood Community Center. Right. There's going to be great food. Um, 50-50 raffle, prizes for the first, second, and third, and best costume design. Uh, I don't know if Smarty Pants is going to be there again this year, but we, it's always a possibility. <laughs> it is. It's possible. And Maplewood Community Center, of course, is 31735 Maplewood. And for more information, call 734-793-1878 or 734-793-1856. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got our weekly reminder about the Pup Garden City Public Library offering the drop-in computer tutoring on Tuesdays from 10 to 12. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. So if you need a brush up on the basics, yeah, come in and take advantage of the great resource mm-hmm. library courses. You know, that's very good because a lot of your seniors uh, and even some you don't even have to be senior are intimidated by the computer. And oh yeah, l- let me tell you, you know, they'll show you how to do emails and. Check your emails and all that, so it's kind of nice. Yeah, for those of us who are not technologically inclined, mm-hmm. uh, you're certainly going to learn yeah, you some work stuff that makes pace. it worthwhile. Yeah, yep, all the basics. And nobody's going to really laugh at you. No, just no. Because you're, That's what they're all yeah, there for. Yeah. Right. Uh, police department is still having their free service where you can drop in your old or outdated prescription medicines. That's a good deal, too. Yeah. We don't want to flush them. they got a box in the lobby. 
a lot better than putting them back in the water system and polluting yep, the water. Exactly. Yeah, just ask Flynn about that. Polluting the water system. <laughs> oh my gosh, isn't that something? Yeah, I guess they're gonna, they're talking about, Snyder's talking about having them go back to Detroit. Wow. You know, now. Water system. Well, I'm not gonna say anything, but yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, exactly. They're gonna get some money, I guess, to help them out too, so. Yeah. Terrible. Okay, American Legion Auxiliary Unit 396 is gonna hold its fall craft and vendor show 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Saturday, October 21st at St. Mel's Catholic Church. That's located at 7506 Inkster Road, north of Warren Road in Dearborn Heights. Mm -hmm. Mission will be a dollar. There will be a bake sale, 50-50 raffle. Food will be also available. All proceeds will go to help veterans and their families. So some good causes there. For more information, visit the craft show page in Facebook or send an email to American Legion Aux, A-U-X, 369, that's the numbers, craftshow at yahoo.com. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a new one. The Garden City Public Library is having an evening with Elliot Bragg, Amy Elliot Bragg, an author on the hidden history of Detroit. Uh, she's going to be a night of learning about the days when Detroit was full of grog shops, mm. bookstrappers, haphazard cemeteries, and a variety of eccentrics. Yeah, that might be interesting. Yeah, it's, it's October 21st, so it's coming up. Mm -hmm. 6 p.m., call to register at 734-793-1830. It's a free event. There's no cost. Cool. There's a Garden City Library is also having a used book sale October 12th to 14th. So that's Monday through Wednesday, mm -hmm. 9 to 8 each of those days. And the last day, the sale will be booked by the bag for $5. Yeah. That's in the Family Resource Center. And if you didn't remember the announcement or the address from the last three announcements, it's still 31735 Maplewood. <laughs> that hasn't changed. Yeah, they, they haven't moved the library the Family Resource Center. It's still located in the same place. We've got a... Um, Fall Craft and Vendor Show from the American League. Didn't we have a second announcement on that already? Yeah, we did that one. Did we? Yeah, that's another. Okay. That's a repeat of one we already went over. All right. Uh, Veterans Pinning Ceremony going to take place on November 4th at Maplewood Senior Center, uh, 6 o'clock p.m. So if you are a veteran or you know a veteran, have them, uh, give a call yep. to Sheila Saluski at 734-793-1870 by October 28th. Yep. I think they've got like 40, the last I heard, uh, veterans that were going to be recognized. They've probably grown a lot since then. Yeah, yeah. It's but, a good thing, yeah. yeah. I'm going to be there, so I hope uh, all my fellow veterans will show up and come on out and be honored. Deserve it. Yep. Yes, we can uh, never show too much respect for the People that make those the sacrifices of oh yeah uh, the ultimate sacrifice, yeah, ultimate sac yeah. sacrifice uh, for defending our country and our way of life. Yep. And then one of Garden City's other really favorite annual activities: mm -hmm. Make a Senior Smile Day. Oh yeah, that's big, big. Yeah, we we get great turnouts for this. This is going to be on November seventh from eight o'clock to noon. We uh, Congregate at the Maplewood Community Center. Yep. Still 31735 Maplewood. It has, <laughs> hasn't moved. Uh, if you've got an extra community room. If you've got your own rake, you can bring it. Yeah, it'll be in the community room. Yeah. We'll they have fill a little, it. They we'll, fill it, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll have a, there'll be a little continental breakfast. Yep. Volunteers will be given their assignments as to where the seniors need help raking their leaves because they can't physically do it themselves. And so this is really going to make, put a smile on their face to have yep. you come in and, and straighten up their, their yard. To, uh, everyone will return to the Maplewood Center around noon for lunch. If you wish to volunteer or if you have any questions, contact the office of Commissioner LeBlanc. Telephone number is 313-224. And, Mike, I think they're still looking for homes to do, too, so if they want to get on the list, they want to call that number because yeah. that's going to fill up quick. Yeah. This is, this is for people that, that really couldn't physically right. do their own raking. Exactly. Now, I was hoping they'd broaden that to, you know, s s 
70 year olds that uh, just don't <laughs> want to do the raking anymore because they're getting tired of it. But uh, so far, I'm not eligible. <laughs> if you wish to volunteer, call the Commissioner of Box Office, as I say, 313 224 8855, or email District 12, that's District 12, at waynecounty.com. Yep. And we have. And give a shout out to Lowe's too. They really do a good job uh, bringing donate bags and some rakes and yeah. And then you get a nice T-shirt too, so you get to keep the T-shirt. And you know, I think that's all I have on the community announcements. Okay, what do you got in the paper there? Anything? Yeah, we had a couple of interesting things in the paper. Somebody uh, passed away. You said, uh, yeah, former former, council. co- former councilman and former school board member Ron Tiskowitz mm-hmm. uh, just passed away. Mm. I've got the obituary out of the. Out of the free press from today. Okay. They said that um, the visitation will be t- tomorrow from 2 to 8 p.m. with a 7 p.m. evening service at Santu's Funeral so- Home, which, of course, is 1139 Easter Road. Mm-hmm. And the body will be in state on, on Saturday from 9.30 until 10. And then funeral services will be at St. Linus Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. At two five five zero zero Haas, which is between Ford and Warren, in like Dearborn Heights, okay. and that's west of Gully. Memorials are suggested to go to the JCI Scholarship Fund. I assume, assume that's JCs International because Ron was so. very active in the JCs back yeah. in his younger days when you were still eligible for it. Uh, yeah, see, that's forty about, now. Yeah, yeah, four, yeah. <laughs> back in our day when Ron and I, when that. Ryan and I were in the JCs. <laughs> Uh, 35 was the was the age that they uh, wow. started kicking you out at. So he, yeah. he's been out of there for 40 years. Mm-hmm. Um, or to the Alzheimer's Association or Smile Train. I'm not familiar with Smile Train. No, I'm, yeah, I'm not either. Sure. Yeah, well, that's too bad. Our thoughts go out to uh, their family. Yeah, and Millie family. and the family. Yeah. Um, I see that uh, we had a Garden City firefighter yeah. injured uh, fighting a house fire on, yeah. on Elmwood. Hope for a speedy uh, recovery for him. Yeah. Apparently it wasn't anything real serious, but, uh, in fact. Me, I think. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't even want to go to the, uh, emergency room, but, <laughs> but the chief insisted that, <laughs> yeah. that she take him there to make sure everything was okay and. It just and need look, some therapy or something. Yeah. And it looks like he'll, he'll be all right. That's a tough job they do, I'll tell you. Yeah. Dangerous. And of course the fire department's having their open house. There's a nice article on that. Yeah. In uh, today's Observer, mm-hmm. and the uh, St. Thomas Apostle Church has got a new uh, priest. Yeah, Nigeria. From, from Nigeria, yeah. Uh-huh. Guy's credentials, credentials were very impressive uh, in terms of uh, his training and background and degrees and so forth, so uh-huh. should be interesting. Yeah, a lot going on a in the GC. A, you know, specialist training in Christian social ethics. And, wow. Uh, Master's degree. Uh, Over so, my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yep. So good. We wish him and and uh, St. Tom- Thomas Apostle Church uh, parish. Uh, yep. Uh, Former good luck. St. Raphael. Yeah. Yep. That's all I have. That it? Yep. That's all? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, look, I want to remind all residents that the next regular city council meeting will be October 12th. Monday. Yep, it was supposed to be the 5th, but they changed it to the 12th, so uh, mark your calendar, October 12th I at 7 p.m. I think we're going to have a presentation from uh, Richard and... I think so, yeah, yeah. they're going to... Uh, Richard and Senator Kanisik, I believe, are both going to be there, so... Yeah. You may want to come, and you don't want to miss that. Yeah. It's 7 p.m., and the council chamber is located at 6000 Middle Belt Road. They urge all residents to attend. Hey, are you a business owner, citizen, or community advocate interested in serving the business community? If so, the Garden City Business Alliance is looking for you. Uh, Become a member is uh, very easy. Just visit their website at gcbiz48135.org or go to their Facebook page at facebook.com slash Garden City Business Alliance. Well, you'll find all the information you'll need to become a member. We are growing, and we want to grow more, so we want you to be a part of it. You can also call 734-788-9319, or better yet, why not come to their next meeting, which is Friday, tomorrow, October 9th, 
6 p.m., and it's going to be hosted by one of our newest members. Uh, her name is Barb McConnell, and she is the owner of uh, the Michigan Massage Professionals. I'm sorry, I had a little brain fart there for a minute. And that's located at 6755 Merriman Road in Garden City. Uh, bring your ideas and business cards because networking is what it's all about. So why not consider joining the GCBA and be a part of moving our business community forward? Okay, before we sign off tonight, if you would like to become a volunteer for the DDA on any of these events, please call 734-261-2830. They're always looking for volunteers. If you would like to help out the good fellows or make a donation, you can call them at 734-679-7838. You may get a recording, just leave your message, and they will get back to you right away. Or send your check. Or send your check, yeah. yeah. And uh, once again, if you would like to become a member of the GCBA or volunteer for any of our events, call 734-788-9319. And uh, I think that's going to pretty much do it. Yeah. I can't think so of So we didn't get a county update. Apparently he was tied up. Yeah, yeah. He must have, uh, yeah, exactly, so... Yeah, this is a bad time of year for Richard. He's, you know, running for city clerk, city clerk in Westland, and yeah. he's campaigning. And I think they had a council meeting there tonight. He had, he had to attend, I believe. There was a council meeting, so we understand. We get it. Yeah, just as once the election's over, then we expect him to be a, back as a regular, yeah, participant in yeah. community chat. Yeah, he, he, if he thinks he's going to kick us to the curb that easy, he's sadly mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And yeah, by the way, I, I had his uh, Garden Club T-shirt down there, too, his new T-shirt. Yeah. We've got um, the uh, Meet the Candidates things uh, yeah, coming that's, up. It's uh, coming up shortly, I think. What? Well, it's going to be on uh, Dan York's, and then it's going to be in the Observer, too, I believe. They start that probably in, what, a week or two? Yeah, but we've also got our... Uh, Meeting over at Maplewood that we have with uh, the, our elected officials coming up. Uh, oh, coffee hour. Coffee hour, yeah. Yeah. When is that? Uh, mm. is second Ooh. or third? I think it's the second Monday of that the would, month. That would be that would be Monday. Or maybe it's the third. So the 12th, Gosh. Twelfth of the nineteenth. Let know. me just check my email here real quick because I think I got something from Julie, if I'm not mistaken. Do you have it anywhere? I might. I don't know. I'm gonna. See if I got it on my calendar. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on. I got it in my calendar here, I know. I don't. If it comes up. It is Monday coffee hour. Yeah, the 12th. 11 a.m. to 12 at Maplewood. Oh. Yeah. So that's going to be busy, busy, yeah. busy. And don't forget that ceremony, Cherry Hill, is going to be done, and they're going to have a ceremony over at Roma Hall parking lot yep. Tuesday at 10 a.m., so show up. All right. Well, I think we're ready to call this a podcast, 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 podcast. podcast. I want to thank my co-hosts, Tom and Mike. Uh, sorry, Richard couldn't make it again tonight, but uh, he'll be he'll be around. Richard's always here in spirit. So, great job, you guys, as always, and thanks to everyone who will be downloading the show for later, and to those that will be watching us on our YouTube channel. We really appreciate your support every week. Remember, the audio from tonight's show will be available on our Facebook page at facebook.com/gcchat shortly after we sign off tonight. So you'll be able to listen to the show in its entirety, and it's going to be on our main show page at TalkShoe.com, um, call ID 82757, and look for the video of tonight's show tomorrow on our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash Community Chat Show. Okay, don't forget the success of a community depends on the community, so please support your local businesses, and if you see something, say something, look out for one another out there. And uh, for all your weather information, be sure to head on over to DopplerTimesWeather.com 
So on behalf of uh, Tom and Mike, this is Carrie. Take care and see you all next week right here on TalkShoe.com. Show ID 82757. Good night. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, come back next week, same time, same channel. And we will see you next week. Take care. Have a safe weekend. Night.